Okay, so before the break, we had gotten pretty good at this vector component addition stuff. And then you probably didn't even look or think about it for the last, you know, nine or ten days. So, refresher. Get after it. Okay, let's see how we do on this. Draw the diagram. X's and Y's. Okay, get the resultants X and Y. Find it. All right, then. Let's have a look at this one. All right, so we'll start out with our first triangle. Okay, the bird flies 750 meters, 30 degrees west of north. Okay, um, so I'm going to go north, and then I'm going to go 30 degrees west of that. Seven hundred and fifty meters. Okay, this will be y. This will be x. Okay, and then the next one is they turn and fly three hundred meters at eighteen degrees south of east. Okay, um, so three hundred meters. Yeah, eighteen degrees southeast. I should have made this bigger. All right, so here's east. Okay, three hundred meters. Um, at 18 degrees south of east is going to look probably something like this. Okay, um, this will be our 18 degrees. This will be 300 meters. This, well, I'm sorry, I had the x, isn't, well, the x and y mixed up here. Again. That is x. That'll be x, that'll be y, and then for the green one, this will be x, and this will be y. Okay, how do I know that that second line should be so small? Because scale is important. Okay, here's how I know that, just cheating in my head. Okay, a 30 degree angle always produces an opposite side that is half the size of the hypotenuse. Okay? Because I know that kind of off the top of my head, I know that this 300 meter line has to be smaller than the x component of the first vector. Okay? That's just kind of experience, but you could also double check it yourself if you weren't sure. Okay? If I'm drawing a diagram looking at it, I go, geez, do I need to go further than that? Do I need to go less than that? I just find the x and y values for the first triangle. Okay? And then I'm like, all right, now I know, and I can draw it to scale better. Or I can draw separate triangles. Either way will work. Okay, that's going to leave me with a resultant that looks like this. Boy, this is a busy diagram. Okay, so this would be my overall displacement, x and y. All right, so we'd be looking at a diagram that's pretty crazy, okay, kind of like that. All right, next step, we got to find all the x's and all the y's. Okay, so to find black, whoop, I want to find, well, okay, we'll find red X. No, I can't. I don't have red X yet. Uh, undo, undo. Okay, so I got to find black X first. Okay, it is the opposite side, so I'm going to go sine of 30 degrees times the hypotenuse, 750 meters. That's going to give me that that side is 375 meters west. Okay, for the y component, it's the adjacent side, cos of 30 times 750. Okay, so that side's 649.52 meters north. All right, then we've got to do the second triangle. Okay, x is the adjacent side on that triangle, so that'll be the cos of 18 degrees times 300 meters. Okay, so 285.32 meters east. Okay, and there, again, I could tell, I probably even should have made that even smaller. I probably made this green triangle a little bigger than it should have been. It probably should have been even a little smaller than that. Okay, um, and then Y is the opposite side, so I'll have the sine of 18 
A times 300, not equals, times 300. Okay, so that side's going to be 92.71. Meters south. Okay, so now I've got all the x's and all the y's. What do I do with them? You subtract one from the other because they're going to opposite ones. Right, I either add them together and make one negative or I subtract them both because they're opposites. Yeah, either way will work. Okay, so to get um, red x, okay, so to get red x, I'm going to take the 375 meters that was west and subtract the 285 meters that was east, including all the decimals, of course, when I do that. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 375 minus, whoops, sorry, the 285. All right, so 89.68 meters west, okay, because west was bigger. And then for the y's, okay, I'm going to have the 649. 0.52 uh, north minus the 92.71 that was south. All right, so we're looking at 556.81. meters north. Okay, now I've got the two sides of my resultant triangle. What do we do with them? Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem, right. If I want to find the hypotenuse, I've got x and y. I want to find the hypotenuse. So the magnitude of the displacement okay, is going to be the, uh, the 89 squared plus the 556, obviously with all the decimals, squared. Okay, so we're looking at 563.99. We also need a direction because it's a vector quantity. So that'll be 10 to the minus 1. The way I drew the triangle, x is opposite. So 89 divided by 556. Okay, so I'm getting 9.15 degrees. And the way I drew that triangle, that's west of north. Okay, that's not what the question asked for, is it? Question wants velocity. And velocity is displacement, which is all that work I just did, divided by Total time, 380 seconds. All right, so B is going to equal the uh, 563.99 divided by 380. Okay, I have two significant digits here, so we are looking at 1.5. meters per second at the angle I calculated, 9 point, ooh, was it 9 point, uh, 9.2 degrees. No, sorry, not 9.2, it's 9.1 degrees. Take that back, 9.1 degrees. Uh, and that will be west of north. You could have also had uh, 81 degrees north of west if you do the triangle the other way. Okay? Ringing a bell. Traumatic bell, maybe. Triggering, I don't know. Okay? Um, 
So the plan here going forward is this, guys. We're going to spend like today and tomorrow finishing up vectors. Okay? That means on Wednesday you'll get your assignment on vectors. That will be one you're handing in, four marks to me, vector addition, vector components. Okay? All of that kind of stuff will be on there. Then we're moving on to acceleration after that. Okay, so on Thursday, we'll be on to acceleration and probably be doing a lab on acceleration early next week. Okay. All right, questions from you guys on that? Okay. Then, uh, a couple ones out of the book I want you to try here. I want to see how we're doing on that. Okay, so I'd like you to try number 15 here. Okay, and then I've got one that we'll watch a video first, and then we'll watch, then we'll do the question. All right, so just for the diagram here. Okay, so uh, 10 and a half meters at 25 degrees south of west. Okay, so here's west. 25 degrees south of west. Okay, and that is 10 and a half meters. Okay, and then I've got uh, 15 meters at 20 degrees west of south. Eight meters due south. You could have drawn your triangle the other way, okay, if you wanted to, overlapping your entire diagram, but I chose not to do it that way, okay? That's what your diagram should look like in general for that one. If you got questions, I'll come help you. Uh, we got both methods drawn up here on the board. Okay, we got the tail to head method here on the right, and then I've got the separate triangles drawn. Okay, basically I just copied the triangles off the other diagram, okay, because they're the same, okay, but I have them drawn here. So from this point, my method for math is still the same. Okay, I want to get all the x's and all of the y's. All right, so we'll start out with the black vector first because that was the one we started with. Okay, black x is our adjacent side, so that'll be the cos of 25 times 10.5 meters. Okay, so that'll be 9.52. 
meters, and that is west. Okay, and then black Y is going to be the sine of 25 times 10.5 meters. So that's 4.44 meters, and that is south. Okay, and then we had our red vector. Okay, our red triangle came next. Okay, according to the red triangle here, uh, our x component is the opposite side. So red x is going to be the sine of 20 times 15 meters. Times 15. Okay, so that side is going to be 5.13 meters, and it is west. Okay, and our y component is the adjacent side, so the cos of 20 times 15. Okay, so that side's going to be 14.10 meters south. Okay, and then we have just our 8 meter due south vector, okay, so it doesn't have an x component. Okay, because it only goes due south. Okay, so if I'm doing the uh, regular tail to head method, okay, obviously now is where I add all the x's and all the y's together. If I'm doing the separate triangle method, here's where I add all the x's and y's together. This part still runs the same. Okay, the difference right now is with the separate triangle method, I don't know what that purple triangle looks like. I'm going to build it. Okay, so I still need to add all the x's and all the y's together. Luckily for me, all the x's go west and all the y's go Which way do they go? All the y components go south. south. Okay, so I just have to add everything, right? I don't have to worry about subtracting. Nothing's backtracking here. Okay, so if I want to get purple x Okay, so purple X is going to be 9.52 plus 5.13 plus 0, because in the blue vector, I don't go west at all. Okay, so I just need to add those two numbers together, and that will give me my overall. Um, okay, so we got our 9.52 okay, plus our. Um, 5.13. Okay, so we in total we go 14.65 meters west. Okay, then I'm going to add all my y's together. Okay, to get my overall y component, so that's going to be 4.44 plus 14.10 plus 8, because in the last one I go do south. Okay, so that's going to be 26.53. Okay, so like I said, if I'm doing the tail to head method, I already know what that triangle looks like. If I'm doing the separate triangle method, it's at this point where I draw the purple triangle. And I draw a line that goes 14.65 um, meters west and 26.53 uh, meters south. So. So I've drawn the purple triangle. It looks the same in both diagrams because obviously it's the same size in both diagrams. Everyone okay with that? Okay. All right. So at this point now, can I find what the mag yeah, go ahead. Okay, what the magnitude is? Okay, so now I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So we're going to go 26.53 squared plus 14.65 squared. But obviously using all of the decimals. Okay, so 
Okay, so we're looking at that side being 30.31. seven uh, meters and then the angle if you drew it this way okay or you drew it the other way all that's going to change is how you order this 10 to the minus one for me of 14.65 over 26.53 and so I'm getting 28 points. 899, so 28.9 degrees. And for me, that is west of south. If you drew the other one, then you got 61 degrees uh, south of west. Okay. All right, so that's that part of it. Okay, for part B, actually, sorry, if we only have two significant digits, then we are looking at um, our final answer being. 30 meters at uh, 29 degrees um, west of south, okay, or as I said, 61 degrees south of west. Okay, that's part A. Here's a significant digit note. If you're going from part A to part B of a question, and you need to use the answer from part A, you must use the rounded value. Do not now keep all of the decimal places. You completed a question that said solve for this, and then part B said use your answer from part A, which only has two significant digits, in part B. Okay, so it's something to keep in mind. It comes up sometimes, and we have to be mindful of that. Okay, I'm no longer carrying over all the decimals. I arrived at an answer, and I'm now using that answer to solve for something else. So it becomes a given for the second part of the question. Okay? So the second part of the question wants to know, if that takes 35 seconds, what is the speed? Okay, well actually, if it takes 35 seconds and it wants to know the speed, is it a trick question? It is, because speed is scalar. So, if I want to calculate the speed, Okay, all I have to do is go 10.5 plus 15 plus 8 and divide that by 35 seconds. Would I do that on a test? Absolutely, I would do that on a test. Because it tests whether you're remembering that speed is a scalar quantity or not. Is it a jerk move? Yes. Am I a jerk? Yes. Okay, I would totally do that on a test. Okay, because we got to be able to know whether it's displacement or distance, speed or velocity. Okay, so little thing to watch out for. Okay, read the wording of a question carefully. Okay, now as a little break, we're going to watch a quick video here before we do our next question. Okay, diagram should look something like that with the purple triangle being the resultants. Okay, if you've got the separate triangles um, and uh, you're looking at the, the separate ones over here, I forgot to bring the blue one over. 